Hi, this is Patricia, the Women of Excellence Advocate. Thank you to all those that are joining. I appreciate you. Hello, Lynn. How are you? I wanted to apologize about not being here yesterday. I'm trying to get over a cold. And so I am, uh, what am I doing? Hi, hello everyone. Hey, Sassy Crowns. Hello, VJ Bless 89. Thank you. I'm Patricia Shaw, the Women of Excellence Advocate, Certified Professional Relationship Coach. I teach women how to break free from what society terms toxic relationships and move forward in faith so they can have the love they deserve or desire. Ah, uh, yes. See, um, oh. <laughs> I uh, was on a prayer line um, Monday and I usually work out early in the morning and the prayer I only had like 10 minutes well it's, short story I caught a cold from being outside trying to work out and then coming right in getting on a prayer line and when I pray my aim is to reach heaven and that's what happened we reached heaven so that's all that matters so thank you for all those who are here I certainly appreciate appreciate you and it is my endeavor to always keep my word so I'm here tonight you may see me pull out some um, tissue to blow my nose but I'm here and here with me is my wonderful husband Michael of 26 years and um, this week we are talking about from my ebook the five C's of a successful relationship yes I need to change it um, so forgive me <laughs> okay hey hubby they say hello hello <laughs> okay so um, I was told by my business strategist to make sure that I always do my scopes at this angle since I upload them on my YouTube page. But I thank you all. And today on, what is today? Wednesday. Wednesday. See, Monday we talked about uh, commitment. And I had someone from my Facebook page to ask me, um, why is commitment more important than chemistry? And I told her that commitment, when a man commits to you and you commit to him fully, chemistry is what attracts and draws you to the other person. And a lot of times it's physical what draws us to that other, to the man. And uh, likewise with him, it's normally our physical uh, attributes and I was sharing with her that as we mature and get older these things with time they fade beauty fades our physical bodies things happen to them and so when a man and a woman fully commit to each other uh, when these things begin to happen then that's how you know love is on board because he will stick around and she will stick around uh, as the word says, through sickness, through health. Uh, better or worse. Uh, bre yes, better or worse. Thank you, honey. Till death do us part. <laughs> Till death do we part. So the vows will remain intact when you are committed together, when there is a commitment. So tonight, we are talking about communication. <laughs> uh, Something that she lacked. Okay, whatever. He said something <laughs> I lack. Right. Okay. So, um, I, uh, somebody said something wrong with it. Okay. So, here we go back this way. Uh, communication. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. If you read the ebook, I tell a story in, um, the five C's of a successful relationship about how I couldn't control my emotions. I was, uh, I shared a story in the book about how one day, uh, before I knew anything about getting my clothes and then putting them up in the closet, I, yes, <laughs> 
I was, uh, I still am what you call a shopping analysis. And so I like to go shopping. And this particular time I had went shopping while, and it was when my children were young. Thank you, Shashika Tear for joining. My children were young at this time. And so, uh, it was a treat and an honor to me to be able to go out by myself. My uh, auntie was babysitting them and he was at home doing whatever men did uh, do when they're home alone on Saturday. And so I honestly was not expecting him, football he said, I honestly was not expecting him to be home for some reason, but he happened to be home that day. And so, yes, watching sports, that's exactly what he said. <laughs> and so as I was coming Coming in, I had all these packages in my hand, and lo and behold, here he comes, as I said, bum rushing me at the door, trying to figure out, you know, how much money did I spend and all this good stuff. Yes, I was busted. And see, remember, I said, I didn't know that he was home, and uh, I learned over the years to, when I go shopping, the throw some stuff in the back of the closet, bring it out a little by little. So when he asked me, is that new? I can say, no, it's old. And I still be telling the truth. See, that's a little secret right there. But uh, nah. <laughs> on this particular uh, Saturday, as I was saying, it taught me how to control my emotions because of this incident. And there's a scripture that I even put in the ebook about when we can't control our emotions yes <laughs> yes lynn we have to do that <laughs> when we as men and women cannot control our emotions uh the bible says that we are like a city whose walls are torn down and that means anybody will be able to infiltrate your emotions and uh you react in a negative way when you aren't able to control your emotions and so on this saturday that particular saturday i was upset with him kind of disgusted that he was even questioning me about the money that i spent and so um I'm, you have to read the book, the ebook, to find out what else happened. But it ended up working out for my good. But the uh, thing that God showed me that day was how to control my emotions. And I used to be a person that had what you call uh, grown up tantrums. I'm sure I'm not alone. I was the person, if it didn't go my way, then. <laughs> He was going to have a hard time. And a lot of times I would... Um, shut down. Yes, just what he said. What you say? Shut down. I was shut down. Do I have any witnesses? <laughs> I'm sure I am not alone. Yes, I used to have grown-up temper tantrums. That's true. And I was shut down. And so when he would want to talk to me, <laughs> I she didn't want to... like a bump on the log. <laughs> Yes, I did. And I was proud of myself for being able to block him out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, see, thank you. Thank you for the witness. And it's something that um, I talk about also when it comes to communication uh, about our will. See, I have a will. He has a will. But uh, at this particular time, I had a stubborn will. And so I didn't want to feel like he was getting the best of me. And a lot of times in relationships, that's how we feel. We feel like, as women especially, we feel like we're always the one giving in. Do I have any witnesses? For years, that is how I felt. I felt like I was always the one giving in. But, yes, <laughs> thank you. D weeks 01. Thank you. And a lot of times, but do you know when you're on a team? Yes. Thank you. But let me tell you something. When you are part of a team, I'm team Shaw. And when you recognize and really realize that you are part of a team, giving in, it, it has to happen. And I'm not saying that as women, we are always the one to give in. A lot of times my really? husband, no, a lot of times, Hush. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
a lot of times he would give in, but I really wasn't um, opening my eyes to see the things that he was giving in to. Now, um, I can honestly say, even now, we have uh, two children who are in college, and I go shopping just about every other weekend, and my husband has not bought a suit in how long? I don't know, dear. Year, two years? I'm just waiting till they get out of school I'm, I'm, so I can go so, get my Harley. Okay, so you see that? <laughs> now, I go shopping every other weekend, but even a suit, uh a suit. He hasn't bought a suit in two or three years. And so it's things like that. The enemy was trying to shut my eyes to, to not see so that I wouldn't see. Yes, they buy toys. That is true. They do buy toys. You're right about that. I now. don't. Well, that's true. I don't. My kids are in college. I'm paying for their education. <laughs> that's my priority. Okay, yes, that's his priority right now. But you heard him. Our son will be out next year. And, and I will be going to get me a Harley. And Harley is on his list. <laughs> right. Big Road boy, King. Big boy toys. That's right. And their things cost way more than our stuff. But I hear you. <laughs> and so uh, what I wanted to share, three things I wanted to talk about today. And I, I said the first one, emotions. The second one I wanted to talk about uh, when it comes to communication is talk to your husband and not at him. A lot of times I have, as a professional coach, I've seen women who will talk at their husband, but they think they're talking to him. And when I, what I mean by that is they will really, in a harsh way, say how they feel. But when you're talking to your husband, you're actually talking to him like you would want him to talk to you. And a lot of times we think that uh, just because they are men that we can talk to them any kind of way, but they have emotions just like we do. And we don't have emotions. Y'all have emotion. They're not as sensitive as we are. And I'll, I'll say that. A lot of times when we would get into an argument, a heated discussion, I would normally be the one who would just linger. Hold on to yeah, it. Yeah, hold on to it. Are you hear? <laughs> I would hold on to when it. When I say my piece is over. Right. And that's that's how it, it was. And it, it has been. He would say his piece. And yes, they are. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure about that one. So I am the one who would really hold on to my feelings. And sometimes I would hold on for weeks at a time. Months. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Probably. Years. Not years, but yeah, weeks and months at a time. But when it came to uh, him speaking his piece, as he said, he would speak his piece and, and that would be the end. But I still wanted to say something. And that's something else I mentioned in the book. We don't always... Yeah, he is funny, really. He really is funny. <laughs> and so um, I would be the one who just thought I had to have the last say. And let me tell you why I thought I had to have the last say. My mother, I have a stepfather. And so he's a very passive man. And my mother really and I hate to say this, she really ran over him. And she she wasn't a good role model as far as a marriage relationship. In the name of Jesus is how they have managed to be married for like 43 years, I think. <laughs> but uh, yes, and so I took my example from her when we first got married. And so um, that is kind of what I was trying to do. But thanks be to God, I did have... Not going to work. Right. He's a very strong man. And so, thanks be to God, I had two women who I took wise counsel from. And so, one, uh, she had been married for 26 years. And then my auntie, she had been married for about 10 years, I believe. And so, anytime I would have issues, I would go to them. I would rarely go to my pastor. I always went to my pastor's wife and to my auntie because I always felt comfortable and confident in the uh, wisdom that I was receiving from them. And one thing I have to say, a lot of times in today's society, uh, for some reason, people don't feel that it's necessary to get wisdom. 
and so many now accept advice. And the reason I say it's advice because... From non-marital people. Right, yes. They're getting advice from people who aren't even married. And I got to say now, I, I give... Um, kudos to Dr. Phil and his wife because they've been married for 39 years and so they actually do give wisdom but that's a whole other issue and so uh, going back to my three points I talked about us as women with our emotions and I talked about talking to your husband and not at him and the third thing I want to say as far as communication never ever ever go to bed sleep yes never ever ever go to bed sleep and let me tell you why go to bed sleep it's I'm late. sorry not go to bed sleep go to bed uh Angry, angry, angry at your husband. Don't go to bed. Sleep. <laughs> I know. I told you, y'all, I, I got a little cold. Do not go to bed angry at your spouse. And the reason I say that is because um, if you go to sleep angry at your spouse, then uh, that gives the enemy time to play even more on your emotion. It gives the enemy time to make you more angry. It gives the enemy time to uh, build up a fence between you and your husband. And one thing I want to say, if your husband works outside of home, if he goes to a job, that is where a lot of times um, outside marital affairs take place. And when we as women go to sleep angry, uh, it's just allowing the enemy room to work. Yes, love. Well, I just want to interject for a moment. Um, as the wife has stated, we've been married 26 years, and I've been married to this awesome woman for 26 years. God has really blessed me. But she did used to be very stubborn. I thank God that God has transformed her. Him too. But, Me too, though. Be quiet. And she used to be stubborn when we would have disagreements, and <laughs> she would sit there like a bump on a log, and I'm trying to get a resolution. She would not communicate at all. I mean, just sit there, still, wouldn't open her mouth, and it would be very frustrating. But the best part is, for us men, when she woke up and decided to stop acting like that and not going to bed angry, is always the makeup sex. I love that part. So we'll cover that in chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> we as men, we don't care nothing. And she always talk about this emotional stuff. Men are not emotional. That's we do true. not get we do not move by our emotions. That's true. And that's what you have to understand, but we do want a resolution. Mm -hmm. At least I wanted a resolution. I speak from that perspective. I have always been one uh that when I met my wife, and then I'll say this real briefly. I, I was 26 years old, and I told God I was ready to be married. And I didn't go to the clubs. I didn't, I'm from Chicago. I didn't go to Chic Ricks. I didn't go to Heroes. I didn't go to AKA. I went to God, and God sent me 300 miles to find my good thing. That's true. And when I found her, I knew immediately. We was married within a year of our meeting. But it, it was not always smooth sailing. I had some issues. I was trying to hang out with my fraternity brothers, my part of Megum Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. And, and then I was trying not doing, I was not taking care of my responsibilities. See. But I learned better. Mm -hmm. It is a process. Yes, it is. And I tell anybody that you need, as she was just stating, get counseling. Mm -hmm. If you know that. You are failing at your marriage. Why would you continue to go down that road? Yes. That's what's wrong. Society has put in our mind that it's okay for divorce. But God never said that it was okay for to get a divorce unless it is adultery. That's the only time in the, that's the only thing in the Bible with states of about uh divorce or if it's abuse. Those are the only two reasons. Anything else, you should be able to work it out, whether it's finance, whether it's communication which are the two major problems that people have most of the time in relationship. So I just wanted to let you know that 
I, I am her biggest cheerleader. I am her biggest supporter. That's true. And and I thank God for her and that she has got a lot better in oh, communicating. <laughs> Yes, I have gotten a lot better and that is why I'm able to help other women because I've truly been where many have been and I've been through the storm, the rain, heartache and pain, but God brought us through 26, almost 27 years later and I'm so thankful. Uh, yes, tomorrow we will talk about... Um, no, chirping. chirping. We will talk about chirping and why it is so important. So today, Monday, we talked about commitment and commitment is key. It's more important than chemistry because as I said earlier, um, we'll figure out something. As I said earlier, uh, when two people are committed to one another, and when our bodies are wearing out and our beauty is fading, the word even says that, that the beauty fades. Vanity, vanity, that's what the word says. And so when you have someone that is committed to you, that is going to willing to put in the time, take it to God. And today I talked about, uh, yesterday, I'm sorry, uh, I was sick, and so we didn't scope, but today we talked about communication, and communication is also very important. So to recap, I said our emotions. Women, let's get our emotions uh, intact and talk to him, not at him. And then three, never go to bed angry. It gives... Uh, the enemy more time to build up a wall between you and the one that God gave you to. So I thank you as always. I am Patricia Shaw and I always say excellence is not perfection. It's progression. Every step that you take in a forward direction, you're going in the right path. So uh, let us not forget excellence is not perfection. It's progression, forward movement. So I'm so happy that my husband is able to be here with me this week. And tomorrow, we will talk about chirping and why it's so important. Is there any question that uh, we can answer for someone before we bid you all good night? Well, I want to tell you all, thank you so much for taking time to be here with us. We certainly appreciate it. I'm Patricia Shaw, the Women of Excellence Advocate, Certified Professional Relationship Coach. I teach women how to. Thank you, Gwendolyn. <laughs> You'll have to watch the replay. I'm sorry. Uh, Patricia Shaw, the Women of Excellence Advocate, and I do teach women how to break free from what society terms toxic relationships so they can move forward in faith and have the love they deserve and desire. God bless your evening. And for those who will watch the replay, thank you for joining. Thank you for the hearts. Have a blessed Bye. night. Bye. <laughs>